Good morning, Long Island, and welcome to CMM Live. It is Tuesday, September 25th, a little bit of a rainy day out there. Um, but we're going to have a great time here today talking about one of my favorite topics, and that is small businesses, particularly small businesses here on, uh, on Long Island. You know, a recent statistic here on Long Island says that eight out of every ten employees that are employed on Long Island work for small businesses. And today we're going to be talking to two of my favorite people who have committed their careers to specifically helping small businesses thrive and grow. And as you know, here on CMM Live, we are looking to help Long Island thrive. My first guest today is Joe Camberato. Joe is the president and co-founder of National Business Capital, a, uh, a company located here on Long Island. And by way of disclaimer, Joe and I have, uh, have had a long-term uh, relationship, both uh, business and personal, but he really is one of my uh, one of my favorite people. He's a great leader, and we're gonna we're gonna dig into him a little bit today. So, Joe, welcome uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, it's uh, it's it's a pleasure. So, talk <coughs> about talk about this amazing growth that uh, you uh, you are a co-founder with the business with uh, with James Webster. Yep. And uh, I've been working with you guys for about ten years. Yeah. And talk wow. about the last ten years. Talk about you know how things went from an idea. To, uh, to this company where you have about 100 employees now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been one heck of a journey. Um, and, uh, you know, it all started kind of from an idea to just help small businesses, you know, get financing. It was very humble beginnings. Um, started out of uh, my bedroom and out of James's uh, you know, dining room. And um, we started slow and steady. But, you know, we, we noticed um, almost 11 years ago now, we had a lot of, um, I personally had a lot of uh, referrals and a lot of customers that were small business owners. Um, and it was in a different industry, but um, a lot of them started asking me for help with business financing. Um, I was in the uh, residential mortgage business and I built a really uh, pretty decent network of small uh, business owners who were uh, as referrals. And a lot of them came to me to uh, get help with their home loans and then a lot of those clients started asking me for their uh, business loans. And you know, probably like three, three clients asked me in one month, hey, can you help me with a business loan? And I would I'd say, well, you know, why don't you go to your bank? And when I, what we realized is that you know, as soon as a customer got turned down from their bank, they really had no clue you know, where to go. Um, and what I discovered after a lot of work and, and research and just kind of taking one deal at a time and, and trying to really shop them around and help them get financing as a consultant, um, that there was this whole world of uh, private lenders that are out there. Um, that focus just specifically on small business uh, loans. Um, and, you know, we, we noticed from there that the process was very difficult. There was a ton of paperwork. Every lender has a different, you know, has different requirements and guidelines. So as a small business owner, um, if you get turned down from a bank, you really just don't know where to go. And um, you can really get pretty fatigued from shopping around, you know, from lender to lender. So we've kind of created a platform that has um, eliminated a lot of unnecessary paperwork um, and really focused on speed. Um, and um, we brought all these lenders together, about 75 plus lenders now that are on a platform and through technology and a number of other things, um, when someone comes to us, we can get them approved in a very quickly you know, uh, fashion. Yeah, I mean, a lot, uh, lot to unpack there, but it's truly what I love about the um, entrepreneurial spirit, right? So in 2008, the world melts down, yep. banking regulations become clamped down, and you know, businesses are worried that they're not going to be able to get their, their financing, and then guys like you are able to come in and see an opportunity to be able to find these um, lending arrangements, alternative lending arrangements from typical commercial financing, and, uh, and get it done, and keep businesses alive and keep businesses growing. It's really Truly a remarkable story. I mean, my notes here say you've secured over one billion dollars in financing for thousands of clients nationwide. That's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, look, you can't even help but <laughs> smile. That's a pretty tremendous, tremendous number there, right? Uh, it, it definitely is. I mean, it, it's it's made us, you know, one of the leaders um, in the alternative lending space, um, and uh, it's a really it's an awesome accomplishment. And you know, we've been doing this now for ten years, but we feel like we're just getting started. Yeah, and you guys are really um, thought leaders in the space. So just like in my profession where there's so many um, questionably uh, ethical lawyers and rogues out there and people that can really, uh, they get the headlines, they besmirch what lawyering is all about. And, you know, if you're a good quality lawyer, you'll naturally stand out in the crowd. And what I love about you guys is from day one when I met you, you said, we're going to do this right 
We're going to do it ethically. We're going to do it legally. We're going to just work hard and build a tremendous brand. And it looks like you guys have really risen to the, uh, to the top. So talk about how impo- important that culture has been as a guiding force for you over these years. That's right. Um, I appreciate that. And it, it, I mean, that's been really our, 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 our main you know, focuses have been you know, standing uh, true to our core values. Um, and, and one of them is you know, just doing right by you know, the, the clients um, and, and focusing on our culture. Um, so we, you know, we've focused on building great relationships with our customers, great relationships with our lenders, um, and building an awesome, you know, in, environment, you know, internally. Um, and that's, you know, just, you know, for James and I, it's not really a difficult thing to do the right thing. Um, and we, we've always focused on that. And I think if you do the right thing and, and focus on, you know, good relationships, only good things will come out of it. And that's exactly what we've done. Yeah, and that's been so impressive to me. I mean, as, as your lawyer, I'm not telling any secrets, but you guys just are always doing the right thing. Whenever a challenge comes up, it's what's the right way to handle it and how do we move past it? And I, I've watched so many other people in your space and industry trying to break into this and are just incorrigible people. And I'm really proud of the way that you guys have been able to, to build this. So talk about some of the actual programs and products that you guys offer. What, to, what types of loans you offer? What types of businesses can be benefited from that? Well, talk about that. Sure. So we work nationwide. Um, we have a big focus here and presence on Long Island, but we also work nationwide. We work with a number of industries from restaurants to um, doctor offices, uh, dentists, uh, manufacturing, wholesale distributors, the transportation space to the typical mom and pop retail location. Um, we help people that are just starting out to, you know, people, you know, anywhere, anywhere up to 10, 20 million in sales. Um, we offer a number of different products and, and, you know, really depending on the, the, our clients, our business owners, really depending on their opportunities, we'll really, uh, that's how we'll focus on what product makes sense. So, um, you know, our core products are small business loans, uh, term loans, um, business lines of credit, equipment financing, um, uh, SBA, you know, we have a very streamlined SBA loan process as well, too. So what what is the what is the typical sales volume that a company that would take a loan from you have? What how many employees would they normally have? Give our audience a sense of what that's like. Yeah, so we're, we're, we we focus on a wide range, and, and we're not just focused. So if well, if you are doing like I said, just starting off, uh, about you know we really need about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in minimum gross sales. Um, and we go all the way up to about, you know, like I said, 10 to 20 million in sales. It's a big gap, but I think our sweet spots in that half a million to about 2 million to 5 million a year in sales. Um, and each industry is a little bit different, what that means um, as far as margins and things like that. Um, and uh, based on, again, the opportunity we'll make up, you know, how we focus on, you know, that type, the right program. Right. And so what, what inspired you to get involved with small businesses, right? So many people out there, particular people in the finance industry like you are, will look to go to Wall Street, will look to work with large investment banking houses, will look to all this. What really, what really inspired you? Was it the need? Was it the people? Was it a combination? Talk about that a little bit. Well, I mean, you know, the, I guess the one thing is small business uh, owners are the backbone of the, the economy in the country. Um, you know, less than... One percent of small businesses do over ten million a year in sales, which is really wild. Um, so, you know, the whole country and, and all these local communities are all made up of small business owners, and it, it, it was really surprising to me how challenging it could be as a small business owner to get financing. And it's already challenging enough, you know, building and running a business, as you know. Um, so, really, you know, coming in as a you know as a partner on the financing side and be able to help someone get financing and be able to help that, you know, to say that we help someone grow their business or hire the next employee and expand and, and to see other people grow, I think is really, you know, rewarding for, you know, to us. And that's, I think, what really inspired James and I. Yeah, it's so valuable. So, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, in dealing with commercial banks myself, um, I was looking at purchasing um, a small condo Right, I went to the bank that houses all of our business accounts. That's been, that's been doing business with us for for ten years. Knows every single dollar and cents that we uh, that we have, and the process was so onerously grueling. Yeah, with having to get through it for me. Yep, onerously grueling that I just said, forget it. I'll find another way to, uh, you know, to to finance it. Right? Yep, and that is killing 
business growth. It's killing it. So talk about your streamlined process. I mean, what's the application process like? It amazes me how you guys are able to accomplish that same um, end game of getting the loan done, have a lower default rate than commercial banks have, and be able to do it in such an efficient process. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so we help, um, you know, we, we help people with excellent credit to challenge credit. So we're not focused on credit. We're more focused on the business and the opportunity. Um, you know, and I, I think too, we're, we're also just, we, we have a realistic underwriting approach. So, you know, if someone, you know, had their credit challenge because they're building their business, we're not really focused on it. Again, we're focused on the opportunity. So it's a very realistic approach where I think a lot of the banks just have guidelines and there's, it's very black and white and, and there's no real understanding for certain situations or things that may, may make sense. Um, but we've, through technology, through salesforce.com, um, we've built out a, a pretty robust CRM system um, and we've digitized as much as we can in the process. Um, and you know, we use, use technology along with great people in the office. So we have a, a big focus on technology and a big focus on a human approach. Um, and through technology, we've um, connected to a number of different lenders. So when someone comes to us, we help, um, we do an upfront conversation, kind of go through their need, and then based on the product that will probably make sense for what they're looking to accomplish, um, be able to tell them exactly what paperwork they'll need, so eliminating things that are unnecessary. And then we package all that up, and that gets loaded into our system, and then digitally connects through APIs and a number of things to um, lenders. Um, and then those lenders will essentially, I guess, bid, you know, um, you know, for that, you know, on that in particular deal. We'll take, we'll gather all those offers and we'll present them back to our customers. The customers get to choose one of those offers and then we really just manage the whole process and are direct, uh, directly connected in with underwriting to make it, um, to, to put all the workload on us and away from, you know, the, the business owner and the customer. So what type of security, what's the typical type of security you'd be looking from these small businesses? So that depends. It really depends on the, the, the product. Um, some um, are personally guaranteed, some are not. Um, some are backed by real estate, some are not. Um, some are backed by the receivables uh, and some are not. Some are also backed by the piece of equipment that we might be financing. So again, it really depending on the product will make up the security. Some are completely unsecured with no personal guarantees. Some have no hard asset security you know, with a personal guarantee. So again, depending on the situation you know, and, and the product will make that up. So business owner uh, you know, gets in touch with you guys and just walk, walk through the process a little bit. Business owner gets in touch with you guys and you have, um, I'm sure, specialists that sort of triage what their situation is, right? Yep. So, yep, we do a discovery call to understand, again, what their need is. Yep. Um, then from there, we'll let them know what um, documentation is going to be needed in order for that specific uh, product. Um, and then we'll send out a DocuSign application so they can do it right on their cell phone or, or at their desk. They don't have to print something out, you know, uh, fill it out and then, f you know, uh, scan it back in or fax it. Um, it's all done digitally via DocuSign. Um, once that comes into us, into our system, we um, will review business and personal credit internally along with their financial documents. And then from there, um, the system will suggest certain lenders or eliminate lenders that we know won't approve a customer. Um, and then from there, we would connect that to, it could be sometimes just one lender, sometimes it might be three lenders, you know, if we're not exactly sure who may give the best approval. Um, and then we'll get that approval back. And, you know, if someone submits us all the paperwork we need, completes the digital application, um, we can usually have answers in same day or 24 to 48 hours, depending again on the product. Um, and then we'll take those uh, offers and we'll present them back to the customers. Um, and the customers will choose what really makes sense for their need. Um, from there, we'll um, request agreements from our lending partners, um, and then we'll manage the process right through to funding. So we can, you know, we can have someone, you know, a completed transaction done in anywhere from one to five business days, depending on, you know, how quickly the client, um, you know, uh, needs us to work. We can work as fast as, you know, our clients want us to. So, so initial call to money in the bank can be how long? Um, one to five business days. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely it's very amazing. Fast. And for, yeah. for folks out there that are that are listening to this or watching this, you have to understand how powerful that is. Time is money. Opportunities come and go, you know, quickly. And the ability to turn around a business on that fast is just unbelievable to me. It's really unbelievable to me. That's right. So let's talk about your own, um, you know, business leadership 
style, your own growth that you've experienced over the last 10 years. You're president of the company, you basically held, head up their sales and marketing team, is that right? That's correct. Right, so talk about that. I mean, I, I manage sales forces in my, in my life. Uh, you don't have a lot of gray yet, but I'm sure it's, uh, I'm a, sure it's, I'm sure it's coming. coming right? through. <laughs> so talk about it, what have you learned? What have you personally learned over the last uh, 10 years of your journey? Well, I think it's important, you really have to focus, you know, not everyone's motivated, you know, by the same thing. So, um, I mean, I've had to constantly get outside of my comfort zone and focus on my own personal growth in and outside of the business. Um, but really just focusing on, you know, people and what, and what motivates people I think is important. Not everyone's motivated by money. Um, everyone has a, a different motivation. Um, and, uh, and, and then we've also focused on culture. I mean, that's really been a huge focus of ours in the business. Um, and creating an, an amazing culture in our workplace has been uh, has probably been one of the best things that we've done. So, what motivates you? Um, winning. Winning. Yeah. Winning meaning what, though? You know, I think you know, uh, you know, being able to you know take this from an idea to really put it into motion, to um, build out different teams, build this company from virtually nothing. Um, to kind of see it all in action and, and, and to see some of the great people that have been with us for some time now, to see them grow, um, you know, personally and professionally, you know, in the organization has been, has, it, it's been really rewarding. Uh, at times it's, it's, it's frustrating and challenging as anyone who owns a business, business will know, but to, to see it all come together and, and to see it, uh, you know, work and, and to, uh, to see where it is today to where it started, it, it, it really is rewarding. And, and sometimes I think I have to, we all have to kind of stop and, you know, look at where we were and where we are, you know, today and appreciate the present. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And I'm telling you that uh, having watched you, um, you guys just have an amazing team. People love working there. They love being there. Your culture is uh, is terrific. And you've done a great job in uh, in marketing yourself. I mean, I notice, uh, <coughs> you know, your social media grow by Joe. So, uh, <laughs> so talk about that a little bit. I mean, that's an interesting spin on how to put yourself out there on social media. Yeah. So I think, you know, the name came up, I think really everything that we do in, in, in all actuality, especially I think in life and, and owning a business, everything goes back to growth, right? So it's all about growing your business. Um, it's all about growing yourself personally. So I think everything that we do really all points back to growth and getting outside of our comfort zone. So we wanted to put this big focus on, on growth because we help business owners grow by providing financing, but also provide, providing, you know, advice and, and um um, and, and helping, you know. So um, my goal with it is to really start getting out with some of the local business owners that we've helped and, and to start share some of the growth stories and, and really and the challenges that other business owners have had to hopefully that some of the, you know, their challenges with other people in their industries, they'll be able to see that and, and maybe help you know, with something in their business you know, as, they're, as they're growing. Yeah, it's 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 a great commitment to uh, to helping folks grow, and I know you offer some other services as well, other than financial services. And, and talk about that, and talk about how that idea came, and how it's been working out for you. Yeah, so we we uh, started a company just uh, just under two years ago called National Business Services, um, and we uh, Kevin Harrington actually was one of the original sharks from Shark Tank, is actually the spokesperson for that company, um, and we noticed that you know we we help. Uh, clients obtain financing for their businesses, but we've also also noticed that um, you know some of not you know not only do clients not necessarily know where to go for business financing, but some of the typical business services, whether it's payroll or credit card processing or marketing services or web design, phone solutions, um, and a number of different solutions, um, they're not exactly sure where to go you know for those solutions or they're not necessarily getting the best deal. So when we help get someone funded, we also will take a look at a number of their different services and we look to maybe you know save money in areas that they didn't realize they could save um, or uh, offer a solution that will help their business grow, whether it's bookkeeping services um, or maybe that they're at a point where they're you know doing their own payroll and that's killing their time. So now implementing a you know payroll service and um, and things like that. So again, again, helping them with every areas of growth from their financing to services and then also maybe pointing out some things that they can be doing on the marketing side to help you know, drive sales. Um, you know, running again a business, there's a lot of moving parts and, and there's all these things that you need in order to make it successful. So um, really trying to uh, bring them you know, first class services and, and the financing experience all together in one company. You really, really smart move. I mean, um, you know, I've referred to you as the Amazon of, uh, 
of business, <laughs> but it's but it's really true, right? The hardest part is getting the uh, the customer there. Correct. When you have the customer there, if you think about Amazon, they're on the app. Yep. So why not buy my groceries there? Why not buy my uh, my dog food there? Why not buy my books there? My music there and everything else? I'm there. Correct. And so it's very convenient. And so you know you, you can't have that. Um, offering those services unless they're there for a critical reason, which is the financing. Correct. Right. So it's really a great, uh, a great move. Really, really a brilliant move, I think. And I think that you guys are going to do extraordinarily well with that, uh, with that endeavor. Thank you. And we, we, we wanted also for our clients to have one place to call and one relationship, and someone that really knows the ins and outs of their business that can you know, help them and just, again, just make it simple and, and easy, so you can put all your time and effort into building the business. Right, so let's talk about advice to, uh, to up and coming entrepreneurs, right? So I know that you are very, um, you know, you're very big into, into coaching and, and you're very big into um, Young Presidents Organization, YPO, you're part of that whole YPO cult. The, maybe you'll teach me the secret handshake at some point. And, uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I, can be, I know that, you, um, that you're uh, very active with, uh, with Tony Robbins and things that yep. he does. Um, two great things. I think they're two tremendously great things. The hardest part for me of running a business is staying motivated, right? That's the yeah. hardest part is it will beat you down, um, you know, if you let it. And you have to find your own personal ways to, uh, to stay connected to other people yeah. and to be motivated. What, what advice would you give young entrepreneurs out there? So it's a really great question. Um, two, you know, well, mindset is super important which you just mentioned, and, and staying motivated. But I think two words really come to mind, and, and one is commitment, and the other is relentless. So I think if you're going to start a business or in the beginning, um, and always, you have to be 100% committed. You can't be half in and half out. You have to be fully committed. Um, and then the word relentless sticks out because you need to be uh, you know, relentless um, in order to, you know, to be successful. You have to, you know, uh, can, you know have to, it's just a, a never-ending relentlessness um, in building and growing your business um, in order to be uh, to be successful. So, um, being committed and being relentless, and then I think it's really important to get to surround yourselves with with other proven um, successful business owners and leaders. Um, I mean, you know, not to just plug you here, Joe, but you've, you're an, a great attorney. You have a great law office, but you've also been a great business advisor. And I think getting surrounding myself with folks like yourself and other business owners who have actually built a business, gone through the challenges and struggles, and just being able to talk to um, other people um, has been has been really, I think, uh, really important in in in, uh, in, in our growth um, and uh, learning. You know, um, it's been it's been really great. Yeah, for me, and helpful. You know, I don't I don't find a lot of credibility um, unless folks have actually gone through the process themselves. You know, you can get newly minted MBAs out there that are taught by the best universities in the world, and that's a great starting. Yeah. But unless you go through the meat grinder of yeah. actually yeah, of yeah. actually yeah. growing a business, yeah, right, it's hard. You got to go through the process. It's, I mean, there's no, there, there's you know, there's no, there's nothing really that you could do besides going through the process that really. You know, that's the real learning experience. Yeah, losing a key sales guy, you know, having somebody leave and go work for a competitor, all these things. Nobody can understand that. Yep, until you're doing it. Unless you're actually doing it. And I know you guys have, um, you know, have been through it all. I mean, I've, I've seen you, I, I've, I've watched yep. you, and you guys have been through, been through a lot. So what's next, right? Where do you see the, uh, the U.S. economy headed? Are you guys optimistic about it? Are you doubling down and looking to grow? Are you in a holding pattern, waiting for the midterms? Where, where do you see this whole thing sort of playing out? Well, that's an extra, you know, interesting question. Um, I don't think anyone knows the answer to that one. But I, you know, I'm curious to see what happens with the election. I think that could, you know, definitely uh, sway things, you know, one way or another. Um, I don't know. It's interesting when you look at a lot of companies, especially, you know, everyone is, you know, doing well right now. They're having, you know, uh, turning real profits. Um, you know, a lot of the publicly traded companies, you know, have really, you know, real, you know, earnings. So, I, I mean, it, it's safe to say the economy is doing well, um, but, you know, I think history does repeat itself. So, you know, we're definitely focused on, on you know, uh, growing the business, but, but you know, uh, also always 
um, keep you know protecting ourselves and keeping that in the back of our mind as well too, and being prepared for you know any uh, any turn in the economy. Yeah, I would be more interested myself. I'd be more interested in what your customer base is doing than any other indicator yeah. there is out there in the uh, United States. So how do you find your, your clients and your customers doing it? Is it robust? Are, are, are things doing well? Yeah, it's a great question. And it, everyone is coming to, you know, eight, nine out of 10 applications that are coming to us now are expanding, growing, hiring people, um, using our financing to add additional employees, expand their location. If they're in transportation, buying additional trucks, um, purchasing a second location. So, you know, we're, we're, I mean, we are super busy. Um, uh, we've been overwhelmed with applications and, and everyone that's applying is doing something that, you know, uh, in, in, to, in order to grow their business, which is really, it's really nice to see. I mean, when we first got started, I mean, we started the company in 07 and then it, it, we went right into the worst recession in history. Um, you know, we were doing, a lot of our financing was to, you know, help people get through, you know, a tough time where it's great to see that people are, you know, back to really growing their business, the confidence is there, and, and that's really nice to see. Yeah, that's, to me, folks that are watching, that's a great indicator of what's really going on here in the country. I don't listen to the headlines all that much of the, the supposed here. key indicators. Yeah. I like feet on the street. Yep. I want to know what those folks who are, uh, you know, who are working hard every day are doing with their time and their, and their dollars. They're the ones who are going to be spending the money as well. Yep. So it's really important to see what they're doing. Um, we have just about a minute left, and I want to talk about technology, right, the role of technology. So I see a lot of things out there, Quicken Loans, right? There's all this go online and, and immediately get, um, you know, approved, disapproved, all that other stuff. How important has technology been to your growth? How important will it be in the future? And where do you see the whole financial industry sort of going that way from a technology perspective? Well, I think it's a big focus. I think just not in the financial world, but every business, it, you know, Technology is changing the game for everybody, so you really have to be focused on it. Um, and um, uh, technology is changing a lot of businesses, but especially ours in, in our space. Um, technology has really helped, again, streamline the process and, and uh, make it easier and, and faster to give decisions to our customers. Um, I think where we're focused is, is we're utilizing technology up until a certain point, but still having a human approach and, and making good, you know, human decisions. So I think yeah. having that balance of still, you know, um, someone in our office, you know, working and having that relationship with the customer, reviewing things, you know, uh, you know and, but, but using, you know, technology as well too. So, so it can never just be straight automated. There's always going to have to be people involved in that. Is, is that what I, you think? I mean, there are definitely companies who, you know, are, you know, automating things. And I, I think at some point we can, things could be completely automated, but I always feel that there still will need to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, someone that's on it, a, a human that's on it, that's making, you know, decision that the automation missed. And I think a lot of the companies that are fully automated today are, are, are missing out, um, you know, on, on certain opportunities. Right. Well, you heard it from him, folks. Joe Camberato, president, co-founder, National Business Capital, National Business Services, one of the great, great, great secrets here on Long Island that we're trying to, uh, to uncover. Joe, real quick, people want to get in touch with you to talk about a loan. How should they contact you guys? Yep, you can absolutely go to uh, nationalbusinesscapital.com. Uh, you can follow me at Grow by Joe. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, helping you grow. Terrific stuff. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you joining us Thank today. you, Joe. I appreciate it as well. Today was a great day. We had beautiful weather. We have a really great office environment, a great culture, a great team. But it's so nice to always get out of the office and to be able to interact with everybody and have a good time. And to see everyone, too, with their families and their kids. This afternoon's been a ton of fun. It's really nice that everyone brings their family out. We could kind of see what everyone's like outside of work. It just extends what our office is about. It's a family atmosphere. And today was just a, another way to, you know, kind of expand on that family atmosphere and, and welcome everyone else in. My favorite thing about NBC is definitely our culture. You know, a job is a job. You could go anywhere, work, get paid, and, and that's that. But the people that make up our company is what really makes us unique. It truly is a place where you can go to better yourself and better your life. And a lot of our employees that have been with us for a really long time uh, have really grown personally and professionally and have seen what that's done for themselves and also for the company. Whether it's your first day or you've been here for seven years, um, everyone has got your back. Thanks to James and Joe, this job has absolutely changed the life for myself and my family. 
the best piece of advice that I can give to, uh, to my employees is never stop growing. And never stop growing personally, and never stop growing professionally. I think at the end of the day, what makes me most proud about the company is the fact that when you show up to work every day, you're coming to work with people that genuinely care about who they're working for and what they're doing. And when people really care about what they're doing, it, it makes it more enjoyable to be there yourself and it keeps the whole team motivated and everyone's working towards the same goals. It's the people that we work with and the warm, inviting, family-like atmosphere that is really hard to find in any other place. So at the end of the day, what makes me most proud about is you know being stopped in the hallway and someone saying um, how much they appreciate coming to work every day and what an awesome culture we have. All of the employees have created that awesome environment and um, just want to say I really appreciate that. All right, folks, welcome back to CMM Live. My name is Joe Campola, your host. And today's episode is all about helping uh, small businesses here on Long Island uh, thrive. That is the mission of CMM Live. We just heard from Joe Camarado, president and co-founder of National Business Capital, National Business Services, who offers financing and other valuable services to um, small businesses. And now we're going to talk to Elizabeth Malafi. Hello. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Well, thanks so much for joining us. She is the coordinator of the Miller Business Center. Um, and I have to tell you a quick story. You know, when I was, so 2006, I guess, when I was contemplating uh, starting this firm, I actually lived in Center Reach, right down the road from the Miller Business Center. And I went in there one day, not knowing, uh, not knowing what it was. And I don't know if it was you or somebody else that I spoke to, but they were the most helpful person in the world, showed me all these resources, and here we are, the rest is history. So I really owe a debt of gratitude to the, uh, to, the, to the Miller Business Center. So tell us about it. Tell us what it is. It really is the best kept secret here on Long Island. And our goal today is to expose you Thank so people you. understand the value it brings. Thank you very much. Um, the Miller Center is part of the Middle Country Public Library. We are a specialized business center within that, uh, that library. The entire Miller team is made up of, bus of librarians who have a specialty in business. So many of us have a background in business or we have business degrees. Uh, so that's why we were picked to be part of the Miller Center. And the goal of the center really is to just help small businesses in any way we can. So that could be a program uh, an educational opportunity for something that they really need, such as social media or com different computer programs that they might need, connecting them with one of our partners for things that we cannot do, and connecting them with other business people that can help them, whether it be connecting them with other customers or resources. So we're really all about connecting. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's all free, right? It's all yes. free. It is 
99.9% right. free. Yes, it's, it it's is. An, it's an amazing, <laughs> it's an, it really is an amazing resource. It really yes. is. So tell me, who's John Miller? Who, who is John Miller and, and why is his name on this amazing resource? John Miller is a local entrepreneur. He started a company and was very, very successful. And when we were redoing the library in 2003, we were looking for somebody to name the business center. At that point, we had been working with businesses, but it was just called the Business and Finance Collection. And we were really getting started in those late 1990s. And when we had that opportunity to give the business center a physical space, we were fortunate enough to connect with John Miller and he believed in what we were doing and the Miller Center was born. Yeah, really, really, truly um, an amazing resource. So let's start, let's start talking about the actual okay. resources, right? Because I think so many folks out there have no idea no. What's, uh, what's available there. Because if they did, you would be flocked all day, every day. I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy valuable stuff. So talk about it. What are some of the most popular resources that you guys find business people looking for that you provide? As far as resources go, uh, which is one of the big things that the Miller Center does is connect businesses with the resources they might need to write a business plan or your previous guest, Joe, is off helping people get financing. And I know that when you go for financing, you need to show that my business idea is, is viable. Here's what the industry is doing. Here is the potential for this industry. Here's where the growth is. And we have a lot of resources that can help people with that. Uh, a lot of the databases we have are proprietary databases that we've subscribed to. So you're not going to be able to Google uh, who are my competitors and get the same information that we might be able to get using a database such as Merchant Intellect or the Reference USA database, First Research. So these are all proprietary databases. Um, when we can't find the information we need in the databases, we, we have a lo lot of other resources that we can use. Um, as I said, we're librarians who are focusing on business, so we've been doing this for a while. We have uh, resources that we go to. We also are always connecting with business librarians from throughout the country so we can reach out to them if there's information that we need to help them with. Um, aside from resources, the Miller Center also offers a lot of programming for businesses. What does that mean, programming? So different educational opportunities and it really, all of the programming that we do is a direct result of things that the people we help have asked for or that we've seen uh, their questions reflect. So we might have a program on how to use LinkedIn, and then that turns into a program on how to promote your business with LinkedIn. We have programs on the new New York State sexual harassment laws and what people can do with that. So it's really a wide variety of programs and all related to what businesses are telling us they need yeah, or that, indicating to us. Folks, what I want you to understand is that the databases and everything are great. It's, it's great. But you could get those if you paid for them. It's you guys, the business librarians that are there. And, and listen, if I sound excited, it's because, you know, what I love about you guys is you don't discriminate. You'll help any business that needs it, irrespective of what size they are. You know, even at the HIA, the HILI, you're great partners with the, uh, with the HIA. You're an amazing resource, not just for our members, but for the organization itself. And it's because of, it's because of you. you know, so talk about your, your role, your involvement. You know, what, what sort of challenges do you get from business? What sort of projects do you get? What are the accomplishments you guys are able to do? Because it's very satisfying, I have to imagine. We always tell businesses, when we do a presentation to business organizations, and we try to do as many as we can to get the word out, we, we obviously give some of the standard questions we might get. Um, so again, somebody's looking to open a business and they want to know what's the industry doing. I'm looking to go into healthcare field. What are the projections for the healthcare field in five years? Easy, we can get that. Um, what are uh, how many people buy pizza in? <laughs> center each in any given year. Those things are easy and it's easy to tell people those are the questions that we get. But what we always say is ask us anything 
anything. And we will work so hard to find that answer for you, whether it be to, to find an answer or find information that you can interpret to the answer that you need or connect you with somebody that can get the information for you. So we really don't say there are any limitations to what we can do um, because we want those questions. We want people to reach out to us and we want people to think of us as like their first source and then we can refer them to um, the information they need or maybe somebody else that can help. Right, so what are some of the more popular databases that you guys use and what sort of information can be gotten from them? Well, you know, or is that I think, proprietary? I no, know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no. Ultimately, what every business owner on Long Island and New York State and the United States wants is more business. Yes. So, what frequently what people ask us is, who are my potential customers? Who can help me? Who wants my services? So, we use a database called Reference USA. Often, um, it's a business directory. So. If you are a, an interior designer, say, and you want to really target people that are buying big new homes, we can help you find a list of realtors in the areas you're looking to work with, East Hampton, Southampton, uh, who are doing business of $5 million or more a year, and now you have a place to start. You have that list of of realtors who are working with high-end customers that maybe you can start a relationship with and they can promote your services. But what we always tell people is, is that list of businesses is great, but you know, because you're a master networker, that networking and getting out of your office is most important. So to that end, we do offer a lot of networking opportunities for the businesses that we work with. Um, all of our programs begin with a networking portion. So we open the doors super early for a program, maybe 8 o'clock or 8.30. People have time to network, and then we have the program. And then we have uh, two large trade show networking events a year as well. So if somebody uh, you know, listening to this says, hmm, I think I have an interesting topic that I'd like to try and share with the business community. What's the process? How would they how would they go about applying to be able to do that presentation? Anybody can send me an email with an outline of what they would like to present and what their qualifications are to present that and we would love it because we we really do want to work with local businesses. We want to keep all of this economic development within Long Island. So we want Long Island business people to be helping other Long Island business people. Yeah, to totally, totally respect that and, and appreciate that. So a couple of things, you got Miller Business Mornings and Business Bites. What are, the, what are those? What are those about? Those sound very interesting. Well, the, it, it always helps us with programming to give them a series name so people get used to branding and you understand branding. So uh, our Business Bites, we call it Bites because we give you a little bit of food when you get there and okay. we give you a little bit of information. So as I said, we add that networking portion into all of our programs. So something like Business Bites might start at 8.30, people network, and then the program is just a little bit of information from nine to 10. Um, and people really love that format. We've found that the businesses that we work with really prefer a morning program before the before they have to go to work because they know that once they're in the office, it's very hard to leave. Yeah, that is that is absolutely true. I see also that you guys partner with the SCORE Association. So mm -hmm. tell us what that's about. Well, we are business librarians at the Miller Center, but we are not business counselors. So it's very important for us to partner with business counselors. So we're fortunate enough to have SCORE come to the library once a week to counsel entrepreneurs, small business owners, any business people really. And then we also partner with the Small Business Development Center at Stony Brook University and we're able to send clients there and vice versa. SCORE will refer people to us and SBDC will refer people to us. Because they, again, as they might be talking to somebody looking to start a business or hoping to get financing, hoping to grow their business and they're asking them questions such as, who are your competitors? What's the industry doing? And the business counselors can't answer those questions, so they might send them to us to help them with that. Yeah, and it's um, the Small Business Development Center at Stony Brook. I, I have a nice relationship with the 
with them as well. And, and it's great that everybody's partnering and synergizing for one common uh, common goal. Sometimes you see fiefdoms, but I don't yeah. get that that's the sense here. Not at all. I mean, we know that we can't all do everything. So it's really just wonderful to be able to have a, a people that you trust that you can say, you need to go talk to Ronnie at the SBDC. She can help you with that part of it. And then when she helps you, come back to me and we'll get started with that, with the research end of it. Yeah, and Ronnie, Ronnie Rosen is great and she's a great friend of the firm and a great resource as well. So let's talk about you personally a little bit. So how did you, how long are you here? How did you wind up here? Was this something that you thought you'd be doing or did you just kind of fall into it? Tell us a little bit about your story. Um, Librarianship is a second career for me. Uh, previous, uh, before I, I received my master's degree in library science, I worked in publishing. So I did a lot of uh, special market sales in publishing. I had worked with a lot of sales reps and sold books to non-traditional markets. Uh, books have always been important to me. So I thought one day I might want to be a librarian. So I got my master's degree over as long as they would allow you to take to get it. <laughs> I took five years because I was uh, working full time in the city as well as taking classes. So I just thought this might be a side thing later on. I got the opportunity at Middle Country Public Library to work there and because it is I feel the best library on Long Island. I didn't want to miss that opportunity. And I, I believe because I had that business background, they thought that I would be good for their business center. And they were kind of just starting with the Miller Business Center at that point. So I think it was just very helpful for me to have that business background that I did understand what it was like to stress about meeting sales goals, uh, wonder if that person was going to call me back about that big order, uh, wonder what I was going to do without that big new product this year, uh, how, to, how to motivate my sales force. So having that background, I think, helps me help the, the businesses that we help. Yeah, sure. It sounds like a perfect, um, perfect background because you know the pressures. You know yeah. You know the, exactly why they're asking for this information and where it needs to go. It's not an academic exercise. I will tell you, the, the Middle Country Public Library is an amazing library. My, my daughter basically grew up there because that's where we go to hang out and, and do all sorts of stuff. So what's the relationship between the Mill, Mill, Middle Country Public Library and the Miller Center? Are you all part of the same, or yes. how does that work? Yes, we are all part of the same. The, uh, when I talk about the Miller team, we are we focus a lot on the Miller Center, but we're also doing work for the Middle Country Public Library as well. We're not full time in the Miller Center, um, but we do have a, a pretty big team, so we're able to cover all that we need to do with the Miller Center. But yes, we are part of that library through and through. You it know, our home. it's frustrating to me. It's frustrating to me. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on and why I try and promote you guys as much as we can at the HIA is, is you guys should be overwhelmed, overwhelmed with business people that are inundating you with, uh, with requests. And, and shame on us. We don't always think as well. But the, the work you do is amazing, and it's, uh, it's such a valuable resource. What, what have you seen over, so you're there about 10 years now, right? Mm -hmm. And what have you seen, so with, with shifts of technologies and libraries in general and books in general, what's the shift you see? Because I'm a, I'm a huge book geek. I don't, I don't use a Kindle. I use books. I collect books. I love my books. <laughs> but I'm so afraid that libraries are just going to go away. No, never. So what, tell me about it. Reassure yeah. me here, please. <laughs> the, oh, this is the easiest question I've had. Um, <laughs> Libraries are not going away. Uh, just generally speaking, we are busier than we've ever been. Uh, the library has changed or morphed into a community center. We're busy all the time. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to work at Middle Country Public Library. Uh, we, we have just always been a hub of the community, but I think that a lot of other libraries are seeing how do we need to change to stay relevant, and they are 
changing. Uh, we are offering a lot of things online, so the people that do want to read on their Kindle or listen on their iPhone can, but we're also upping our game with programming and different services. The Middle Country L Public Library offers passport services, so you can get your passport at the library. You can come in and get things notarized. Um, so we're uh, we're really upping our game that way. As far as the business services go, it's it's very heartening to me as somebody who sincerely believes that libraries should be helping businesses because a, a strong business means a strong economy and a strong economy is great for everybody, including the library. When the Middle Country Library started working with businesses in the late 90s, libraries weren't doing it. And even through my career in the Miller Center, many libraries hadn't seen the value of helping businesses. That's slowly changing. Um, at the Miller Center, we work very hard to help other libraries help their businesses. Um, we do help businesses from throughout Long Island, but I would be more than happy to have other libraries helping businesses as well. We go to conferences and present to other libraries on how they can help businesses. Uh, we, I've co-authored two books on how to help, how libraries can help businesses. Pitch them. Pitch them now. So, what are they? Well, they're really not any kind of book that any layperson would want to read. You don't know my audience. There's a lot of creatures out there. Might want to, might want to delve through it. Um, Supporting entrepreneurs in the digital age is the most recent one from last there year. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Um, again, it, it's it's written specifically for librarians. It's, right, it's a, it's, it's it's a geek factor librarian type of yes, book, correct? Yes, All right, yes. I got it. Um, and I wrote that with my colleague Sal Zivincenzo. Uh, so it it's just very important to us that people see the the value in the business community and. It's, it's such an important message. You know, I don't think, other than you guys, I don't think of other libraries on Long Island as resources for a business. So I live in the Three Village area, and they probably do a good job. I just don't, I just don't know. I just don't think about it. I think about you guys. You're the, you're the leaders, and I can see where collaborating would be very helpful, right? Mm -hmm. And I, and, and I hope that people watching this and, and really understanding what a valuable resource you know, libraries are. How much of a threat, though, I understand the community centers, mm -hmm. you know, but are we attracting younger people? So anytime I go in the library, and I do love going in the library, you know, it's like a senior citizen uh, fest, shall we say, you know. So you guys do a great job, I know, with, with young children, but how are we doing, how are we working towards attracting them back to libraries? Well, that's definitely a struggle for libraries, quite honestly. We're very lucky on Long Island. Our libraries are wonderful. Um, they're very well used. Um, and libraries throughout the country are still well used. Uh, but there is a struggle right now in the library world. How do we get that in between stage? So we're very good at getting children and their parents. And then we're very good at getting the people once they've maybe finished their careers and their lives have slowed down then they start coming back to the library. Uh, we really try to do programming that they might be interested in. We promote the digital services to them. So we do have a lot of people that use the library that might never enter the building. Maybe they enter every two years to renew their library card. But they're using the digital services, so maybe they're commuting on the train and they're listening to audiobooks through the digital services for free. So if you're subscribing to Audible, cancel it. <laughs> you can get all your audio free through your library. So that's how we're trying to get those people right now. But it's, a, it's definitely a struggle to get that in-between age. Yeah, so I didn't realize that. I'm an Audible, I'm an Audible guy, right? I, I subscribe, they automatically give me a credit every yeah. month and I, and I get a book. So what's the technology? I saw something called Canopy or something like that. Well, Canopy is an online uh, film. Uh, oh, for movies. Uh, yes, for movies. If you're looking to get audiobooks, uh, you can use Library, which is open to all Suffolk County residents with a library card. And a lot of libraries also subscribe to something called Hoopla Digital. Okay. That will allow you to get audiobooks, ebooks, and movies.
That's fascinating. That, re that really is amazing. So I remember as a kid, and I grew up in, uh, in the Comsawag District, so the Comsawag Public Library. Mm -hmm. That was our summer hub. They had book clubs and contests, and my sister would always outread me, and I'd get <laughs> aggravated about the whole thing, you know. Are there a sort of summer programs that go on there as well in the uh, library? Summer reading is a huge thing in, in every library, including ours. Uh, just the past several years, we've started to really ramp up our adult summer reading club, and that's one of the ways we're trying to get a more diverse age group of people to participate. So we offer prizes and recognition and games to get them to participate. And we saw, we saw our participation nearly double this year for adults. The children's department always does very, very well because the schools compete against each other. Yeah, that, that's got to be and a lot of fun. everybody yeah, loves that, competition. That's got to be, <laughs> that really has to be a lot of fun. So switching gears back to business for a minute. So you heard, um, our last guest, Joe, say, you know, that over the last 10 years, he's seen when they first started, um, businesses were coming to him for financing to mm -hmm. keep them alive, and now they're, you know, now they're gr they're getting loans to grow. Mm -hmm. Do you have you seen a shift over the last 10 years in the types of people that are coming to you, the types of information they're looking for? What have you observed? We've absolutely seen a shift. I think when we had that large economic downturn, we had a lot of people coming in to start their own business. Um, a lot of times that was out of necessity. Right, they lost their jobs, right? they couldn't right? find yep. a job and they w wanted to take the skills that they had and start some sort of consulting business. So we were helping a lot of people with that. Again, they might visit uh, a business counselor and then they wanted some information on that industry and we would help them that way. Now we're, we're still helping the same amount of people, but it's more people either starting a business because they really want to or working with a company and wanting to grow the business that way. So that's a big change that we, we saw in yeah, the downturn. Yeah, that's, that's good though. That's, those are the good, Yes. you know, op I mean, every opportunity is great to help somebody, but it's, it's, it, seems, it seems like, especially here on Long Island, we've gotten through that very tough area. And even the, the Miller Center also offers job counseling. We have career counselors on staff that can help. And while we still have people coming in for help with their resume and help with applications and help getting a job, we are seeing them actually get jobs more quickly than they have in the past. So yeah, and that's, that's very helpful. So, I mean, you've had a great career path. You're, you know, you're, you're also an award-winning librarian. Um, you've seen you know, I guess thousands of people come through your, your doors, you know, yes. what's the advice? What's the advice you give to folks out there that are looking to start a business or grow a business? What do, what's the best advice you can give them on your observation? The best thing uh, that I can tell them to do is to get out from their office, get out from behind their desk, get out there and meet people because we find with the Miller Center that it's not somebody seeing our brochure somewhere, it's somebody meeting me maybe two or three times or meeting one of my colleagues two or three times before it finally takes, oh, that's right, the Miller Center, I have to contact you. Or it's them meeting somebody who has used the Miller Center that can encourage them to use it. So I, I really think networking and being out there and meeting people is the best way for any business person or entrepreneur to succeed. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great point. And I love that you guys um, do some sort of women's expo as well. Talk mm -hmm. about that. Uh, you know, a mutual friend that we have yes. seems to be, <laughs> seems to be uh, always excited about that. So talk about that program. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys, Campolo, for uh, sponsoring of course, absolutely. that event. Um, those sponsorships really help the Miller Center help everybody throughout Long Island. But we do offer two large networking events a year. The Women's Expo is coming up on October 4th. It's held at the Middle Country Public Library, and it focuses on women entrepreneurs. So it started 18 years ago as a way to kind of help women entrepreneurs who maybe didn't have the knowledge or the confidence to take their business to the next level. So we created this outlet for them um, to meet people, uh, to meet other business women that can help them grow their business. So it's a great way for them to network, but it's also a really fun show to shop, do your holiday shopping at. 
Uh, again, it's on October 4th. We have 83 vendors, and if you can believe it, we get uh, over 2,400 people to the library wow. that day. Yeah. So we're able to fit them all in, um, and they have a great day. And then about 12 years ago, we started the uh, Strictly Business a business event, and we work with chamber chambers of commerce, uh, the Brookhaven Coalition of Chambers, and our local chamber, the Greater Middle Country Chamber of Commerce. And it's twofold. It's one to encourage chamber membership because we know that for a small business, being active in your chamber can really make all the difference in the world. And to also allow the businesses to network with each other. So we offer that every year in May, and we have over 100 vendors at the library for that and about 800 attendees. And they just love speaking to each other and meeting each other. It's amazing. Well, we're out of time. Folks, you heard it. Elizabeth Malafi here today from the Miller Business Center showing you that librarians are cool and libraries are cool. Yes. They're a great resource. If you're not using them, you need to use them today. Liz, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. I really appreciate this. And folks, that wraps up today. But get your butts to the Miller Business Center at the Miller Middle Country Public Library. Thanks again. Thank you.